Hello everybody, this is Havoc with my first ever non-strategy review with Greedfall. Developed by Spiders and published by Focus Home Interactive, this open world RPG takes us to a familiar time period but in a fantasy setting, bringing some well-executed new features and gameplay styles to the genre while still remaining similar enough to not alienate its player base. In this review, we'll go into the setting, gameplay, and features, both good and bad, to see if this is right for you. In full disclosure, I did receive a preview copy of this game from Focus Home for reviewing purposes. It is very much appreciated, but it will not have an effect on the opinions brought up in this review. As always, let's dive in. Set in what would be our 17th century, Greedfall takes the beginnings of colonialism and puts it into a fantasy world with great execution. You'll find yourself in a host of very thematically different areas throughout the game. Starting in a disease-ridden port city, Serene is filthy and run down with dead and dying people around every corner. New Serene is a newly founded city and as expected, is under construction with scaffolds, makeshift ramps, and unfinished projects scattered throughout. There's the native land of Tyr Fredi, where nature takes precedence over civilization and it's simply gorgeous, reminding me of Elder Scrolls and even Assassin's Creed 3. Each of these areas is very well crafted to bring immersion into this fantasy world. Spiders doesn't shy away from the political side of fantasy colonialism, thankfully, rather they embrace it and use it to their advantage. The tensions between the various factions on the island, such as the mainland war between the Bridge Alliance and Teleme, or the bias of colonists towards the less civilized Tierfordy natives, it'll shape your personal narrative and the narratives of your fellow companions throughout the game, something I'll go into detail later on in the video. Not everything was so grandeur though, and while not a game breaker for me, these issues did pop up enough that it has to be noticed and mentioned and it did ruin the immersion just a little bit. The first is repetition. Mindful that this is a double A game, there are a ton of reused assets and layouts. I've been in the exact same room in at least three different cities, just with different wallpaper. And it's amazing how people stack things the exact same way in corners no matter what part of the world you're in. Even people are reused extensively. I do get that assets such as character creation take a lot of time to make and to make them look good, but when it's extremely obvious you'd use the same exact face in 5 different characters, it begins to look a bit lazy. The other theme breaker for me is the sheer lack of people. Your starting port city may be full of plague and death, but it's still a port city, and one that should have an Assassin's Creed amount of people walking the streets. The same for the cities on Tier 4D. These cities have massive walls, tons of projects going on at the same time, and there's five people on the streets, maybe a couple of guys mining in a pit, where there should be people everywhere. Hell, there's enough bandits right outside of these cities to take them over with how little people are inside. Performance aside, this emptiness and asset reuse and refall is one of its biggest downfalls. That all being said, keep the theme of fantasy colonialism in mind throughout the rest of the video, as the developers have crafted their entire game around it subtly but effectively, and you'll see that evident in the video footage. Without a doubt, the best feature in Greedfall is its deep customization. Most RPGs will have a solid focus on customizing armor, weapons, and skills, yet Greedfall has chosen to take it even deeper. As a companion-focused RPG, you change those around for yourself and all of your companions. Each companion has a very specific role within the team, so it's been great to be able to tailor almost every aspect of their person to fit that role. The depth of armor and weapons customization goes to another level, with additional slots that can be filled with handcrafted pieces that take raw materials to create. You can add pads to your armor, buffs to magic rings, or special elemental effects to your weapons, all of which can be switched out at any time using a workbench. For those min-maxers, that means you can tailor weapons and armor to specific missions to really be able to dominate against certain enemies' weaknesses. The skills and abilities take a step out of your normal RPG role as well and require a bit more forethought to your character build. There are several aspects of the game that require you to have at least a base skill in order for you to use. There's no lockpicking minigame for example, you either have the required lockpicking level or you don't. Need to jump a gap to get to a hidden area? Hopefully you have the endurance to do it. Even to craft potions, you need to have a science level. At first I was slightly annoyed with this system, I started out as a mage but I couldn't even use the rapier or the cool rifle I had acquired because I didn't have the skill. I eventually grew to enjoy it though, it forced me to rely more on my team in combat, and it also made me think a lot harder on my skill and ability progression. For instance, since I had a melee focused character, I chose to focus on my magic and then into the diplomacy side of things, which saved me more than once in dialogue with certain characters on missions. 
Considering my role as a diplomat, I thought it rather appropriate. And charisma is something I'd recommend getting into if you don't want to bribe everyone or resort immediately to violence. One last thing to mention on customization is something I very much applaud spiders for implementing, and that is a skill ability reset. While rare throughout the game, you are able to find crystals that will completely reset your skills and ability. That way if you're already several hours in, but being a mage isn't for you, you can start your character build over without restarting the entire game. In my opinion, every RPG focused game should have this system in place in some form for their players. Missions in Greedfall were an unexpected surprise for me, and not in a bad way. Most missions across the board had several different avenues of completion, and in many instances depended on what your character build had unlocked. For example, you may need to get into a warehouse to retrieve an important item. You can A. Acquire the uniform of the faction that owns it to gain entry, B. Use your charisma to intimidate or gently influence the guards, C. Put a sleep potion in their drinks, D. Blast open a door, in an unguarded area or the traditional option E, hack and slash your way to get inside. Some of these options won't be available if you don't have the right skills, but the idea is the same, and it adds not only to player freedom and choice, but replayability and companion influence as well. If the mission is sensitive to a certain companion, how you complete that mission will influence what that companion's opinion of you is. With the potential to have a companion that could be angry enough to leave your group permanently, these types of missions do truly have an effect on how your game turns out. In terms of quantity and quality, Greedfall executed both fairly well. The number of missions, both main story and side quests, was enough to keep me interested in going, but not so many where I was irritated at the need to complete all of them. As for quality, there were few missions that repeated themselves in objectives or method of completion. Most of these missions were very well written and developed a story that was actually relevant to the main idea overall. Several of them actually had some unexpected twists that presented conflicting moral choices in how I wanted to complete them. It's this type of quality that really gave me the incentive to want to finish as many missions as I could, and I'll most likely complete the game having done every single mission I can find. My only small complaint about some of the side missions was the length. On reaching New Serene, I had a couple missions that had upwards of 10 different steps, which wouldn't have been too bad if each step didn't require me to run back and forth all the way across town every single time. These particular missions did get a bit annoying, even though I did enjoy the storyline and the dialogue involved in them. But what really brought missions home for me is that your companions each have their own story and missions too, and these see the same quality and effect as the rest of the world of Greedfall. There are few ways to better create an attachment to your team than to engage in personal missions that affect their opinions on you and vice versa. Spiders did a superb job of creating a meaningful story and history to each character, and when it came to their missions, I honestly felt led to complete it with their caveats in mind. If they didn't want me to kill any of their faction members, for instance, I did my damnedest to sneak in and complete it with no casualties. I felt led to cater to my companions, even if I knew I could make up that lost reputation in later missions, and that's some great writing on the parts of the developer. Combat in Greedfall is a bit mixed for me. Considering your extensive customization abilities, combat can vary greatly and it does look fantastic. You'll use a system of combo attacks, blocking, and a form of ultimate attack to deal various damage to your enemies. I found in my playthrough that as a mage, more of my time can be used as a support role, putting enemies in stasis while my companions slaughter enemies one at a time. I will say that the AI for my team is pretty intuitive, and they'll consistently avoid enemies in that stasis mode to keep them frozen. It's a bit of a cheese tactic, but it did work very effectively. That being said, combat got repetitive very quickly. Now I've only pumped about 20-ish hours into this game, and it's entirely possible that late game combat for all classes vastly improves, but the timeline of combat I just mentioned is my solution to every single battle I played. And especially as a mage, I was never in fear of forgetting to take a potion to refill my magic, so my companions seemed hellbent on reminding me every time I got low. It's a bit unfortunate that combat fell a bit short for me, as from the videos pre-release it looked pretty good. It's not that it's bad, it's just not that great. Taking that all in, what's my verdict on Greedfall? Overall, it is a very enjoyable RPG experience, especially when you look into Spider's rocky history of game releases. Spider's took a well-known era, put it into a new world with a unique idea that was well done and provided some fantastic story writing and lore. While lacking in combat or reusing assets in several places, and the sometimes barren feel of what should be fairly populated packed areas, 
Greedfall makes up for it in player freedom, mission quality, customization, and that your companions provide meaning and purpose to your group and to the overall story as a whole. While not perfect, I still recommend this game to anyone looking for a solid RPG single player experience. That's all for my review on Greedfall. Since this is my first non-strategy review, I'm sure I missed some aspects other reviewers usually include in this type of game. If so, do let me know your thoughts and comments on what I should include in the future, as this will definitely not be my last non-strategy review. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Check out my Discord and my Patreon, where my patrons get to vote on what videos get put up on the channel. Thanks for watching, this is Havoc, and I'll see you in the next video.